Hi everyone, welcome back to Curriculum Mapping with G Suite. In today's video, I'd like to take you on a quick yet comprehensive walkthrough of the latest version of the Curriculum Mapping Tools add-on for Google Docs that I've been developing. So I've actually deployed this in our school environment and I'd like to show you a little bit of how this works. So for some context, the screen here on the left would be a teacher account it's it's my account in this case and then on the right is actually the curriculum uh, account that houses all of the curriculum documents and I'm keeping these side by side because I do want to show how some of the automation is working um, between the teacher account and the curriculum account so the first thing I do certainly I installed the add-on and then I just opened a blank Google Doc so in my add-on menu, I can launch the add-on, and you'll notice there are there's a new uh, option available in this version. So there is the option to create or edit a unit planner form. So this portion removes the need for AutoCRAT. So what this does, and I'll go ahead and launch it, it opens the template request form in the sidebar of the Google Doc, and it'll pre-populate question one at, with the document ID. So in this case, the teacher would either fill in or choose from a drop-down menu their unit of inquiry or however you've organized uh, your curriculum, and you would choose uh, a unit from this list. So let's say we're looking at government. Maybe this is a fourth grade unit. Uh, maybe we're going to spend roughly 25 hours on it over the course of three weeks. I'll choose a start date of, we'll say we'll start on Monday. And if we said three weeks, let's go ahead and we'll just end here July 1st. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and submit this. I'm gonna be given some information. It says, please be patient. Your request is being processed. Your template will appear in this document momentarily. Ownership of this document has been transferred to the curriculum account. When your template appears, you may close this sidebar. So already just by clicking that button, we can look over here to the curriculum account and we see that uh, the Google Doc has already appeared in the WIS uh, curriculum account. Um, the document was also renamed and after some time, the template um, has appeared in our screen. And as a teacher, I can close this window and then begin filling in the planner, okay? So some of the logic that's built into this is if I were to do that again, um, it wouldn't try to paste a new planner on top of an existing planner. So what it does is it's smart enough to know that, wait a minute, this template this planner already exists. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this again. And this time what we're presented with is the option to make changes uh, to the planner that we've set. Now this won't automatically replace the data in the Google Doc. So you'll still have to maintain um, the request form with the data that is merged to the Google Doc. So. That is how you request unit planners in this latest version. Um, a, another part of the tool is the ability to upload a resource. So I've demonstrated this before, but this will load a Google form that uh, accepts file uploads. And the way this works is um, a teacher highlights a, a keyword in their unit planner, this could be any text. So say this line one here is our resource that we want to hyperlink to something that lives on our computer hard drive. I can just copy that line one. I can click add a file, select a file from my computer. I can go to documents and maybe it's this timeline document that I want to be able to hyperlink. Click open. I upload it. So when I upload it, um, 
it's going to go to the curriculum account and be become owned by the curriculum account. And when I hit submit, um, what this does is it'll hyperlink that resource to line one. So now I can actually go ahead and open that text document directly from here. So, and if I wanted to do another resource, I would just click the reload button and it'll let me hyperlink another resource. So that is the resource tool. Um, the next tool is the tech tool inventory. Um, again, this works in a similar fashion where it will load a Google form. And from this point, we can then choose any known ed tech tools that are being utilized uh, throughout this unit. So we can kind of track um, our investments if we're in a position of purchasing ed tech tools for our school. So say we're using things maybe like ed puzzle, maybe we're doing some Flipgrid, Google presentations, and so on and so forth. Then I can hit submit. Now these documents um, aren't embedded directly into the planner, um, but they will appear in the Data Studio table uh, of the Google site. So you can actually see them as you're scanning through all of the unit planners. Um, it adds more visibility into the types of tools teachers are using in their units with their students. And just like in creating a new unit planner, if I were to come back and click on tech tool inventory, this time I would be presented with uh, the ability to edit those tools that I'm using in this planner. And the very last piece is the, the ability to insert standards. Uh, so as we said, this was, a, we talked about being a grade four unit. So if I click grade four, I could then, for example, choose the ESD standards. And submitting that takes me to all of the ISTE student standards. And I could go ahead and find somewhere in my table where um, I've allocated space to track the outcomes that the outcomes and standards that we're utilizing in this unit. So maybe we're doing some digital citizenship work. Um, and simply by hovering over and clicking on the standard, it inserts it into the Google Doc. And I can go back to go back to the original selection of options and choose a different subject area to begin attributing outcomes um, in another subject area. So you know, given the collaborative nature of Google Docs, if you have a, a team of several teachers, you could all kind of be doing this simultaneously inserting standards in the various uh, respective areas to kind of maximize efficiencies. So that's how that part works. And I think that is essentially the uh, new add-on in its current form. So once I've had a chance to uh, add some more comments within the code and um, clean it up a little bit, I will be ready to share this out into the community. But uh, I hope you like this new approach and uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, take it and use it on your own. Thanks for watching. Bye.